Coming up on this week's edition of Sunday Nation, we are speaking with the Honorable Dennis Langford Morris, the former dean of the Oakland County Circuit Court, the first African American and the first woman dean since Reconstruction as part of our Women's History Month Spotlight. And of course, then the professor, uh, Charles Simmons, is here to talk to us about foreign policy, the war in Ukraine, and the need for African Americans to be involved and engaged in international affairs. And of course, and then a theory on how we solve the issue of poverty and inequality. A professor from Lawrence Tech University, Dr. Masood Omrani, is here to talk to me and of course, my tribute to the late Father Norman Thomas of Sacred Heart Catholic Church, who passed away last week. It's all coming up on this week's edition of Sunday Nation. Welcome back to Sunday Nation. The Honorable Dennis Langford Morris, uh, former dean of the Oakland County Circuit Court, uh, the first African American and the first woman dean in the history of the Oakland County Circuit Court, uh, for a long time has exemplified what judicial excellence means in the African American community. And so for our Women's History Month, we're talking to uh, the Honorable Dennis Langford Morris. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Bankale. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you and your show, Sunday Nation. Thank you so much. You know, I want to begin because uh, you have uh, you've you've had such a remarkable judicial career, and uh, you know there are very few places in in in, in the state of Michigan. Uh, where, you know, when we talk about African-American judges, uh, your name is among the top three that comes up. Uh, but, but perhaps uh, let's begin with what interests you in the law. Well, you know, I've thought about that often, right. uh, many times over my career. Right. And I recall my father wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, he ended up at Ford Motor Company for 47 years, tool and die. But he had always had that in his memories of a desire to be a lawyer. And so I started out as a social worker. My first full-time uh, job in courts was in Wayne County, where I investigated child abuse and neglect cases and presented them in the Wayne County Juvenile Court. Back then, there were not prosecutors that presented the cases, but rather we gathered the facts, presented the evidence, pulled the petitions, and argued in court. And so it was in the Wayne County Juvenile Court that I met many lawyers and judges, and they encouraged me to go to law school. At that point, I was finishing my master's degree uh, in guidance and counseling. I majored in adult counseling. And uh, I went right on to take the LSAT and entered law school. And so before they actually brought in prosecutors to handle the cases, right. I was presenting them in the court. So, and I know at some point you were also a federal prosecutor, but just talk about just the importance of coming from that social worker background and how that, you know, the interplay between that and the law. Did, did, you, did you come at that uh, having a different perspective on the law with that social worker informed background? Absolutely, no doubt about it. My job as a social worker, which not only the investigations of child abuse and neglect, yeah. but before yeah. that, yeah. adult abuse and neglect for yeah. seniors and mentally and physically challenged persons. Yeah. Uh, I made thousands of home calls throughout Detroit and Wayne County. Mm -hmm. And so I met people, sat at a kitchen table close to them, just mm -hmm. like I'm here with you, mm -hmm. and listened to their stories and investigated abuse. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me the opportunity to learn how to listen and to read people. Mm -hmm. And that is extremely helpful mm -hmm. when you're practicing law mm -hmm. and certainly when you're serving as a judge. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it, it's interesting I'm listening because it, 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 it takes me back to uh, Justice Sonia Sotomayor uh, when uh, she was being questioned before being confirmed to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And you know, this notion of judicial activism, you know, she was talking about just, to paraphrase her, just how your experience is important. 
yes. and that each of us are informed by our experiences. And, and I think, uh, you know, the social worker background for you lays that out as well in, in your entire judicial career. Yes. Oh, she's a great justice, by the way. Uh, at any rate, I was blessed to have the opportunity yeah. to serve mm -hmm. uh, as a counselor, mm -hmm. as a social worker, because being a judge, uh, it does give you an opportunity to help people. Yeah. And that's always been my focus. Right. I enjoy helping others. Yeah. So, so let's talk about, because, I mean, you, you know, you, you, you are, uh, you know, a, a veteran uh, judicial, senior judicial officer. Uh, let's talk about what makes a good judge. Uh, you know, what, what, what are the attributes uh, of, of, of a good judge? Wow, there are so many. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about some of them. Well, one is patience. Right. And to be respectful of those that come before you. You've got to understand that sometimes your rulings are not something that you actually enjoy. And people that come to court are usually afraid, whether it's a civil or a criminal case, many of them have never been in court before in their lives. And so you're their first contact where they are meeting you in a courtroom and they're terrified. Mm -hmm. And so to be a good judge, you need to have, obviously, the legal acumen mm -hmm. uh, where you have studied the law. We mm -hmm. all went to law school. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also need to have the ability uh, to deliver an opinion, mm -hmm. a reasoned decision, mm -hmm. be unbiased, impartial, and to care mm -hmm. about working hard mm -hmm. and delivering justice. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'm thinking as you're speaking, because I don't want to really litigate your cases here, but you, you have presided over some significant, significant cases over the years. But what does it mean, though, for you? Because uh, understanding that by the stroke of a pen, mm -hmm. you can alter people's lives and you can alter the lives of families. Absolutely. I recall when I first started in Oakland County, right. uh, one of my mentors, Judge Hilda Gage, told mm -hmm. me, she said, just be careful and make sure you read everything because you could shut down General Motors with a pen, with the, yeah. the stroke of a yeah. pen. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to pay attention right. uh, when people come in with last minute injunction requests on mm -hmm. a Friday at 4.30. Right. Right. Uh, it really is important that you, you understand mm -hmm. that everything you do mm -hmm. is meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll never forget my first trial mm -hmm. in Oakland Circuit Court, mm -hmm. uh, one of the earlier trials, right, right. was a divorce case. Mm -hmm. My first eight years, mm -hmm. I did family, civil, mm -hmm. and criminal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the divorce case, uh, two of the important aspects were a used TV and the family dog. Mm -hmm. And there was a big dispute over the used TV and mm -hmm. the family dog. Mm -hmm. And I knew that to that couple, mm -hmm. That was extremely important to them. Mm -hmm. So whether you're dealing with millions of dollars mm -hmm. or a used television, mm -hmm. to the parties that come before you, mm -hmm. it is the most important matter in mm -hmm. their lives right. at that time. Right. So, so let's talk about uh, uh, the racial diversity and inclusion here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you've been, you know, a pace setter, uh, you know, African American judge here in, in Michigan. Uh, you know, Oakland County Executive David Coulter was uh, on this program a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he was trying to assure me that Oakland County's, you know, inclusion efforts are now taking in a whole different meaning now, and he's pushing for inclusion. You were the first uh, African-American dean of the Oakland County Circuit Court, also the first woman dean since the 1800s, since Reconstruction. Yes. I'm just thinking, though, when it occurred to you that you would become the first African-American dean and the first woman since Reconstruction, I mean, what went through the back of your mind here? Well, you know, Bunkley, I've been around a long time. Yeah. Not since Reconstruction, <laughs> right, but, right. <laughs> but a long time. Yeah. And uh, I have so many memories right. in Oakland County mm -hmm. because, you know, mm -hmm. I started mm -hmm. uh, in the prosecutor's yeah, office yeah. working for L. Brooks Patterson, yeah. one of the toughest prosecutors yeah. in the world. Right. Uh, and when I walked into that prosecutor's office, there wasn't even a black secretary, no lawyer, no bosses, no clerks, just me. Mm -hmm. And I was hired on the spot because I was coming from the Wayne County Juvenile Court. 
And I didn't know that there was a lot of pressure back then mm -hmm. to bring in African Americans. Uh, they were blasting L. Brooks Patterson in the newspaper every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. for the lack of diversity, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. in his office. There mm -hmm. were very few women. Mm -hmm. And so that opportunity mm -hmm. that I got, and, and by the way, my mother told me, I can't believe you're going to work for him. <laughs> I stopped by her house mm -hmm. on my way to the interview, mm -hmm. and she enlightened me. Mm -hmm. She said, L. Brooks Patterson, Irene McCabe, mm -hmm. anti-busing, mm -hmm. you're going there mm -hmm. for an interview? Mm -hmm. And I said, Ma, I want to be so a lawyer. So Mama gave you a historical lesson. She did, because uh -huh. I didn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. uh, I was young when right, all right. of that happened. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in law school and you're working full yeah, time, yeah. like I did, yeah. I never read a newspaper. I was right. too busy trying to review my yeah. cases right. and briefs and get ready for work mm -hmm. and for school. Mm -hmm. And so it really was, uh, uh, it was kind of um, unreal mm -hmm. uh, to realize that God had placed me on a path mm -hmm. where I would be mm -hmm. the first woman mm -hmm. dean mm -hmm. of the Oakland Circuit Bench. When mm -hmm. that uh, hit me, mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't believe it because mm -hmm. there had been many women before mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. but none of them mm -hmm. became the dean. Mm -hmm. And it's just like becoming the first African American in Oakland County mm -hmm. to ever win a countywide race. Yeah, yeah. Running for election right. in 1994, mm -hmm. I was an incumbent mm -hmm. because I had been appointed. Right, yeah. But the idea of actually winning mm -hmm. countywide. So, so how does it feel for you though, uh, during this period of Women's History Month, uh, you know, looking at the, the sweep of your judicial career, mm -hmm. and you, you've come from very unlikely places, a social worker, mm -hmm. a, and so forth. And, and you know, and in as much as those backgrounds are so significant and important to our daily life, you know, in, in the larger mainstream of American society, you know, they, 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 you know some folk don't, don't see it as significant per se. Uh, but social work is, is very significant. It's an unlikely background to travel from there to becoming dean of the Oakland, Sound, Oakland County Circuit Court. Absolutely. And the social work, along with mm -hmm. my other involvement in yeah. the community, yeah. because you see, uh, when you serve as a judge, mm -hmm. you deal with pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the criminal cases, the civil cases, mm -hmm. people are generally uh, engaged in some degree of pain, mm -hmm. and that's why they end up in court. Mm -hmm. There's a dispute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's people are not happy uh, in general, yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. so and you you can't make everyone happy yeah. with your ruling. Right. Uh, but I've always. Uh, made it my business mm -hmm. to stay active, involved in the community, mm -hmm. uh, giving back in mm -hmm. bar associations, mm -hmm. judicial organizations, mm -hmm. whether at the local, mm -hmm. national, mm -hmm. or international level. Yeah. So, so I wanna also wanna talk about what you're doing now. You, you've left the bench, uh, Oakland County Circuit Court, and, as, and, and now you're in arbitration. Can you tell uh, us what you're doing now, what you're involved in now? Yes, I've been very blessed mm -hmm. uh, to have this opportunity mm -hmm. to start a new career that, from my perspective, it pulls together mm -hmm. my social work and counseling skills mm -hmm. along with all of my legal skills as a lawyer, whether I was assistant prosecutor, mm -hmm. private practice, assistant United States attorney, and then a judge for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I'm working with JAMS. Mm -hmm. JAMS, it's Judicial Arbitration and Mediation Services. Okay. And so I'm handling arbitration matters all over the country. I'm also mediating cases. They're all confidential. Mm -hmm. And I'm being hired mm -hmm. on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have the opportunity to really get in the room mm -hmm and help people mm -hmm. to listen to their disputes as a mediator mm -hmm. where I'm actually speaking with the client mm -hmm. as well as the attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm getting some great work here mm -hmm. in uh, Michigan and across the country, but it's an honor. Yeah, yeah and, and, and that is, it, it's interesting, and, and, and I understand that there, there are very few. Uh, perhaps you're the only African-American in, in that space for Detroit? I am. 
I am. I'm the first at Jams. We're downtown Detroit at the 150 West Jefferson right, building. Right. So, so we are still in this long walk to equity, right? So, so it's, 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 I mean, uh, different facets of our life, whether it's Jams and other places, are still, we, we, we still have to, you know, uh, demand some level of equity and inclusion. And, and you know, I, I read they made a big deal out of you joining them. Yes. Certainly, they are fortunate mm -hmm. to have you. But I want you to mm -hmm. talk about just the, 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 when you reflect on black life yes. as an African-American woman, how at every chapter it's, you know, it feels as if, uh, you know, we have to remind, uh, uh, you know, entities and institutions of the need to expand the table uh, for, 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 for black people to have a seat at the table. Absolutely. And this is why it was such an honor for me right. to join JAMS, right. uh, because they do have that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a national DEI chief, mm -hmm. a young black woman who's remarkable, mm -hmm. Joanne St. John. Mm -hmm. And she's doing a great job, as well as uh, the recruitment of African Americans. Mm -hmm. And I think I may have shared with you at some point, mm -hmm. uh, Jay-Z, mm -hmm. Uh, Sean Carter mm -hmm. is responsible mm -hmm. for there being more and more African Americans working mm -hmm. in ADR mm -hmm. because he was selling his clothing business, the mm -hmm. great Jay-Z, mm -hmm. and he had to select an arbitrator and unfortunately there was such a small list. Now mm -hmm. this was not with Jams, it was right, another right. public organization. Okay. Uh, but, but it had a crossover effect. And he sued. Okay. He said, this is not fair. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, my constitutional rights are being violated. Mm -hmm. And so the judge told him, well, you could have selected the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. in your contract, <laughs> but you didn't. And so now you've got to go from this list. So they did give him some other options, and that okay. was in 2018. Okay. And so now you see more of a push right. uh, to actually recruit right. uh, African Americans and more women right. and other ethnicities. So let me ask you one final question here, though. You know, looking at your life, if you had to lead it all over again, would you have gone to law school? Would you end up being a judge? Or would you be a doctor, an engineer? I mean, what profession? <laughs> well, what would you have selected? You know I'm a CAS technician. And oh, I, I got to say that. That's right. Uh, CAS tech alum. That's CAS right. CAS tech. <laughs> and I'm very active with the alumni group. Yeah. Uh, and I majored in chem bio. I okay. wanted to be a doctor. Ah. I really did. Uh -huh. And then I got kind of waylaid because, you know, I'm a teen mom. Right. And so as a young mother, right. I thought I'd go to something that would be easier than right. going to med school. Right. So that's how I became a social worker right. and then the social work job with right. the cases in court uh -huh. drew me to right. the law okay well uh, thank you for sharing your inspiring story with us oh Bancale, you know we've known each other a long long time yes we have and Sam Logan is thank, smiling thank you <laughs> the Honorable Dennis Langford Morris uh, the thank former you. Dean of the Oakland County Circuit Court uh, the first African-American Dean the first woman Dean uh, since Reconstruction, talking to us here uh, for a special uh, Women's History Month Spotlight. We'll be right back with more on Sunday Nation.